but the thing is this uh brother and a lot of uh commentators with a few exceptions are not paying attention to this this territorial uh controversy has always been used by the imperial powers against any government or regime that is anti-imperialist this thing this controversy was dormant for very long time and what happened was this in 1953 chedi jagan whose party is now in office but of course it has strayed far from the ideology that he force advocated he became today his party is into neoliberal economics they're even uh, talking about they actually have the americans here they want to set up a military base in guyana good because they have the u.s troops right here from the south command training troops from the Guyana defense force and some leading former anti-communists uh, sorry former communists and uh, anti-imperialists are today calling for u.s military base here we'll come to that but the party is no longer the party it was in 1953 when charlie jagan became the first marxist to be elected to office this is long before salvador allende 53. so the venezuelans weren't too comfortable about it and so was the u.s because washington at the time wanted kennedy and so we're very uh, wary of uh, this type of, you know, uh, having Marxist regimes in this area because the Cuban Revolution happened in '59, and when Chedi Jagan uh, was in office and so on, he he, he was talking about, uh, you know, Cuba and support for Cuba and so. But Venezuela had a president by the name of Romulo Betancourt, and Betancourt was a staunch anti-communist. And he was faced with an armed insurrection in his country by a group organization known as the Armed Forces of National Liberation. And he said that uh, Castro and Cuba had sent military advisors to them. So when Venezuela heard that Guyana was going to get independence in 66, Venezuela decided, well, look, this is not good for us. And they reactivated this dispute, right? Because they had this communist insurrection you had the cuban revolution in 59 and uh venezuela did not want to have a marxist regime on its doorstep so uh with the full backing of washington they uh, activated it and what needs to be known is that the united states has always been historically has always been in venezuela's corner has always been so for years when you had client regimes puppet regimes pro-imperialist regimes in venezuela uh the u.s used it used venezuela against any progressive government in ghana so you had forbes burnham who uh was a champion of the non-aligned movement and uh burnham allowed he was uh Paving and, and he was on the anti-capitalist part of development. He took solid anti-imperialist positions like recognition of the uh, PLO. We had a PLO office here. We had a, uh, and he took uh, support for the uh, Sahari people's struggle against Morocco, Polisario. We supported this, uh, recognized the Sandinistas very early. Uh, one of the governments that helped broke the isolation of Cuba and he even allowed Cuban troops to uh, pass through with a military aircraft going to Angola to refuel here. And the U.S. threatened Guyana. The Barbados was doing it earlier, and Barbados bowed under pressure, but Guyana continued. And the U.S. had threatened to bomb their airport in Guyana. And uh, Guyana, even he even provided the initial support to help uh, Morris Bishop when they got rid of... Uh, Eric Gary, their weapons, weapons and troops came from Guyana to help Morris Bishop them secure to secure strategic parts of the country. This is an untold story. Who know there are those who know it, and it's 
meant to, it was kept a secret uh, for years, but you know, this is it. So the Cuban troops are going through here to Angola to fight. And uh, the Americans pushed Venezuela, were pushing Venezuela to invade Guyana. They even sold F-16 fighters to Venezuela. And I was here and I was I was in the uh, I was a leading, I was in the higher the hierarchy of the People's National Congress Party. And I broke with that party after it abandoned everything Burnham fought for, and it went on uh, the part of new liberal economics. You know, when the Eastern Bloc collapsed, many of these, some of these parties lost their way, you know, and went in the right wing direction. And uh, Burnham launched the People's Militia to make every citizen a soldier to defend the country. The point I'm making is that the US, today, today, the US, is back in Guyana is back in Guyana but you can see and the reason they're back in Guyana is because you have a right-wing government in Guyana and an anti-imperialist government in Venezuela when you had an anti-imperialist government in Guyana they were back in the right wing in Venezuela and this is what they've been doing as Henry Kissinger said America has no permanent friends no permanent enemies only permanent interests and this is what we're seeing 